here what's up giants fans hub watchers youtube and rumble subscribers twitter and instagram followers it's kush back at again with another new york giants video day three the final day rounds four five six and seven or in this case for the giants because we did not have a seventh round pick rounds four five and six recap for the new york giants 2022 draft a draft that's been you know really good so far start off with a bang a plus plus all the superlatives that you could use to describe night one we're getting evan neal and cave on thibodeau um around two and three day two recap which you could find you know i'll put it up right here as well you can find a day one recap there too which was as i mentioned in that video a little bit controversial um but they filled in needs they got extra picks and they got in my opinion at least one player that could be a starter for this team going forward in josh azidu I am not as high on Wandale Robinson as a lot of other people are, but I do see how he can be used in this offense with Brian Dayball. I've made the comparison to Cole Beasley. I've seen some people say Isaiah McKenzie as well in terms of players of similar size and skill set that uh, Dayballs have experience with. And of course, there's the whole, he also plays very similar to Kadarius Tony. So that's going to be something nice to have on your offense. Um, the final pick was Cordell Flott. Hashtag fear to flop. I'm going to try to get that trending. Somebody that I think, you know, is a depth cornerback. Even if I, even after I went and I looked at him a little bit, that's kind of where I think he is. He also looks like he could probably play some safety as well. But as soon as we headed into day three, I liked it more off bat, starting off with Dan Bellinger. And then we ended off with a bang that I can't wait to get to to talk about. Darian Beavers, in my opinion, one of the steals of the draft, man. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second, but let's start off with Dan Billinger, and I'm going to try and run through these a little bit because I kind of want to give my final thoughts on the draft as a whole towards the end of this video too. But he was one of the best tight ends on the board available. He's somebody that at the position is an all-around guy, which is what I personally wanted for the Giants, and I'm sure a lot of Giants fans did as well. But most importantly, with the blocking, he was one of the best blocking tight ends in this draft coming in, and he's somebody that could really add that part of his game to the Giants offense in terms of being a help run blocker and also in pass blocking as well. He was a three-year starter for the San Diego Aztecs and in his last year he had 31 passes caught for 357 yards and two touchdowns. Um, in terms of as a player he's a pretty big or not pretty big but he has a nice big frame definitely has the advantage in contested catch situations and in terms of his blocking he's a really technical blocker when it comes to pass protection but he could use some improvement in the zone run schemes and whatnot. All in all, like I said, in my opinion, this was one of the best tight ends available at the time that we take him. And I think he's our starter day one. I think that he should be thrown into the fire. I feel like this is the guy, he's the best tight end on our roster right now. And I think he's only going to improve with that experience that he's going to get immediately. Then with our second pick in the fourth round, the Giants went Dane Belton, the safety out of Iowa. I'll straight up admit, don't know too much about him. Did not was not one of the players that I had a chance to look at, but this was around where he was projected to go from all accounts that I've come across. And I do have a little bit of a read up here for you guys from Lance Zetterline of NFL.com. So I don't leave you all high and dry for those of you that probably don't know much about him either. Now, uh, before I get into that, though, the theme of this draft and what kind of rings with this pick here has been filling in needs and um, going off of the trade back from last night where we got two additional picks, one of them being used here. It seems like that's just what the Giants are trying to do. They're trying to fill in as many needs as possible with cost-effective moves and good players as well because they're doing this. You got to think about the fact that we are kind of strapped for cash in terms of free agency and whatnot. That's why we're trying to get 11 new players on the roster. And then also, they're trying to get the best players that's on their board as well. Now, here's the read-up from Lance Zerline. He says, Belton's interception total and overall ball production from Iowa's hybrid cash spot will certainly grab your attention but they may not be indicative of his NFL projection. He has average size, can line up over tight ends, and excels in short zone coverages, where his ball skills and anticipation bring him into the action. He lacks the suddenness to stay with route breaks underneath and will be exploited if asked to cover on the back end. Belton has the physical ability for run support, but defensive coordinators are sure to be concerned about his trouble reading keys and locating the football on the collegiate level. And then another one here, Dan Burt. Brugler from The Athletic says, A three-year starter at Iowa, Belting played in the cash position in the defensive coordinator Phil Parker's scheme, lining up as a hybrid strong safety and outside linebacker. 
He was a first team all Big Ten performer in 2021 and was one of only seven Power 5 defenders with at least five interceptions last season. He plays with heady reaction skills and his eyes lead him to the catch point where he can make plays on the ball naturally. Just from these two alone, before I actually you know, try and do a deep dive on him, it sounds like he's going to be a tackling machine, has good size to do that with the experience that he played in that hybrid linebacker safety role. If he is somebody that uh, sees playing time, definitely strong safety. I feel like Xavier McKinney is going to hold down the fort at free safety, and we're probably going to have maybe a little bit of a rotation with uh, Belton if he cracks it and sees it. Julian Love, who I think has proved himself to be somebody good enough to see that playing time and maybe an Aaron Robinson or the Cordell Flock guy that we took yesterday. After Belton, the Giants went with Micah McFadden, linebacker out of Indiana. Now, Micah McFadden, similar to Josh Azidu, I've only had a chance to, to take a glance at. From that glance, I honestly think he's like a backup interior linebacker type of role that probably is going to, you know, see some time on special teams which is good we're taking him in the fifth round it would be amazing if we could get a starter out the fifth round for all the jokes Giants fans make about Darius Slayton he's one of the best fifth round picks we've ever had because of the production he's given uh when you consider where he was taken and so I hope McFadden you know completely kind of breaks out of that label that I'm sort of putting on him right now I'd love to be proven wrong but he's that thumper linebacker that right now it just looks like a backup to me he has a lot of improving to do when it comes to you know diagnosing plays on the field i definitely don't think we're going to see him in any type of coverage role we're probably going to use him as in you know up the middle blitzer you know when he sees time on the field and whatnot but straight up i really do think this is special teams good depth really good depth and we needed depth going back to what i was saying earlier the theme for this draft being filling in needs you look at the linebacker position right now blake martinez Tay Crowder, I feel like, are the obvious top two. Um, we have Hart Coughlin, who we moved inside from last year, right? Am I forgetting? I've, I'm definitely forgetting somebody else because there's no way we have just three three middle linebackers. But, that, I mean, that goes to show you, right? Like, it was 100% need. So, good pick. A tough player. Kind of, you know, average athleticism. Definitely somebody that you're using as, you know, a tackling guy out there doesn't have the speed to keep up with really anybody um you, that you're really going to count on him as a coverage guy and, and you know just a thumper just just a linebacker that's going to be out be out there to give you good tackles and going to play his heart out so good pick and i don't want uh, any fans to get this or distracted or wowed by his stats because his stats are impressive let me leave them off right here to you he led the team in tackles in 2020 in the 2020 season and still had a really good 2021 season he had 77 tackles then with 15 and a half for loss six and a half sacks and two forced fumbles like i said though in terms of coming to the nfl level is going to be a, like an extra blitzer definitely somebody up the middle i mentioned carter coughlin funnily enough uh the giants middle linebacker right now i kind of see him in a similar role as carter coughlin after adding the first linebacker we went and got a position that you guys know i've been harping on for weeks maybe months now that we should definitely address in the draft dj davidson out of arizona state the inside lineman defensive tackle basically nose tackle now playing for the giants i'm just happy that we straight up even addressed this position because i was scared that we were going to get into the draft get out the draft and not take anybody there i don't like the depth of the giants defensive tackle position right now we have two great starters in our dexter lawrence and leonard williams no doubt but I've been saying it for months. It what was once a strong part, if not the strongest part of our team over the past year, has really become a weak part of the team. We lost um Austin Johnson in free agency to the Chargers, and Austin Johnson is super underrated. People didn't realize how good of a run stuffer he was. He was like one of the best linemen in the league last year. Third, I think, when it came to run stops or, or related stats to that. We lost BJ Hill, obviously, before the season even began. And, and if we still had BJ Hill, I wouldn't even be banging the table like this for a defensive tackle and when i'm thinking about who we have behind leo and dex right now the only name that comes to mind is uh david moa i think so we needed somebody here and dj davidson good pickup man this is the fifth round now at this point um exactly where he was supposed to go this is exactly where all the mocks and big boards had him going 
fits exactly what we need which is a gap a gap stuffing nose tackle and run defender and he fits what wink needed as well when the pick was made i saw a lot of tweets from beat reporters saying wink got his nose tackle meaning that you know he's gonna need somebody to stuff up the run there and they want to keep dexter it seems in that 3-4 defensive end role like how Leonard Williams is also in the 3-4 defensive end role which I think is really smart because Dexter is a complete mismatch of that role but I was really happy with this pick here DJ Davidson after Davidson we went and got another offensive lineman making it three in the draft which I'm not complaining about I'm a big offensive line guy I love it we got the other guard from North Carolina yesterday we got Azidu today we got Marcus McKeithen um I hope I pronounced that right and this man is a big body, bro. 6'6", 340 pounds, had 25 games started for the Tar Heels, all of them at right guard. We are just completely overhauling the offensive line, if you guys realize. When Joe Shane came in here, up until now, April 30th, 2022, we have officially nine new offensive linemen on the team. That's enough for a starting five and backups. And, well, we essentially have a brand new starting five, right? You got Andrew Thomas at left tackle. Um, I think Josh is going to earn his spot at the left guard. But if not Josh, then Max Garcia. You know, it's a toss up for now. Those are the two guys. John Feliciano at center. Mark Glowinski at right guard. Evan Neal at right tackle. That's much improved. I'm really liking that offensive line. You talk about the depth as well. This this pick right here, Mr. Marcus McKeithen, who was a, a powerful run blocker for the Tar Heels. He does need to improve in his pass protection we know that description kind of reminds us of shane lemieux so now we have like a shane lemieux type player on the right side of the line there but as depth it's great it's great as depth and shane lemieux as a depth player is good as well i always said if we could somehow improve the line to the point where one of our starting guards last year is relegated to a backup position then we are sitting straight for the offensive line you look at the backups right now you know uh what is it matt pert um matt gano Shane Lemieux, Mr. McKeithen, Jamil Douglas, Ben Bredesen. Like, that is depth. Guys that were starting last year, that we were talking about last year, oh, this guy should be depth. They're actually depth now. So I like the pick on the pick up because it encapsulates what has literally been a legitimate overhaul of the offensive line to make it better, to get better players in here, not only as starters, but as their backups for if they go down. And I'm liking that a lot. <laughs> I mean, Shane, I we used to say it as a joke, but literally in a couple months, he's done a better job at overhauling the offensive line that Gelman did in a couple of years. And that that is just a fact, man. And then we end off the draft with what is 100% my favorite pick of day three, man. And what is 100% a steal of the draft. Darian Beavers, the linebacker out of Cincinnati. This man was supposed to go in the third round. We get him in the sixth with our last pick. This man, I like him better than Marcus McFadden. He is, or not Marcus McFadden, I'm sorry, Micah McFadden. I'm mixing up the names. He is better than Micah McFadden. He should have been one of our third round picks. Like, that's why he's a steal. He has the potential to be our coverage linebacker of the future. I know a lot of people do know him for his, you know, skills and talent when it comes to the tackling game and the run game. And he is a little bit of a thumper. But I don't think the dude, when he dropped backs in coverage, has let up a touchdown since 2019. I'll have to pull up that stat over there for y'all. And yes, I know most people do know him once again as that guy that's more of a physical, great side-to-side -side speed linebacker. Great when it comes to being that thumper label and blitzing. But I think, when you, I think they underestimate how good he can be in coverage. And I, I finally found a tweet. I pulled it up. 700 coverage snaps. Zero touchdowns allowed, 64.3 passer rating, allow passer rating allowed since 2019. I do believe this was our best pick of day three. It's right up there, you know, for me, it's between him and Dan Bellinger, because Dan Bellinger, I think, is an automatic starter. Uh, Beavers, I think, can be a starter, but he's definitely going to be competing with Tay Crowder for that uh, second linebacker spot right there next to Blake Martinez. And like I said, I'm a big fan of the DJ Davidson pick as well. I wanted to do an overall thoughts on the draft as a whole but this video is already kind of long i'm gonna put that off either for another video or a stream but you guys let me know what you think put your thoughts down below day three was a success i like i like it three out of the five in this third day i definitely like a lot that being bellinger davidson and beavers belton has to grow on me 
along with the other guard pick but but like i said when i was talking about marcus as a whole when you think about how the, the new o-line is coming together i can't help but like it you guys let me know what you think down below uh like share subscribe and i'm out hey guys thanks for watching thank you for checking out my channel the hub here on giants youtube make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video like it share and subscribe and i'm out